Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. In today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to make Israeli style hummus borrecas. Hummus borrecas, how delicious does that sound? Well, why do I call these Israeli style? Because for this borreca, I'm gonna be using puff pastry, which is the type of pastry that they tend to use when making an Israeli style borreca, as opposed to the handmade pastry that I use when I'm making my Sephardic Turkish borreca, which of course, this would also be delicious with that dough too. So you can use either one. But for today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make it with flaky puff pastry because it's super easy. We're gonna make the hummus ourselves we are going to add delicious flavors to it and then we're going to stuff that yummy puff pastry with this delicious hummus filling and the combination of the flakiness of the puff pastry and the creaminess and spices of the hummus is going to be incredible and you're going to love it so let's not wait another second and let's get started for today's recipe you will need two cans of chickpeas, also known as garbanzos, a half a cup of tahini paste, a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, the juice of one large lemon, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of cumin, a half a teaspoon of paprika, four cloves of garlic, water as needed, two boxes of puffed pastry sheets, one large egg, and some sesame seeds. You will also need some measuring spoons, a couple of wet measuring cups, two baking sheets, two cooling racks, a colander, a bowl and a spoon, a blender, a lemon squeezer, a cutting board and a knife, a silicon or rubber spatula, some oven mitts, some parchment paper, and another small bowl and a fork and a pastry brush. So now that we have all of our ingredients and tools together, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pull your puff pastry out of your freezer and place them onto your counter so that they can thaw. In this case, this brand takes about 40 minutes for the sheets to be ready to work with. So you can pull them out of your freezer, you can actually take them out of the box and just sit them on your counter and allow them to thaw so that they're ready when we're ready. So the next thing you're going to wanna to do is put your colander into your sink and then you're gonna pour out the contents of both of your cans of garbanzo beans right into your colander. Now, what we're going to wanna to do is rinse our chickpeas. We don't necessarily just want to drain them from the liquid. We also want to rinse them because rinsing them really removes a lot of the sodium that they were packed in. And this way we can add the amount of salt that we want and we can control the sodium level in our recipe. So I really like to give them a very, very good rinse. And it is also believed that by rinsing the chickpeas, it'll also make them easier to digest. So why not? So the next thing you're going to want to do is cut your large lemon in half and then just squeeze both halves of that lemon so that you have all of the juice of that large lemon. And then you're going to want to peel your four garlic cloves and have them ready. So at this point, it would be a great time to start preheating your oven to 350 degrees to make sure it's nice and warm and ready for when our borrecas are ready to go in. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your blender and you're going to take the cover off and you're gonna add all of your chickpeas right into your blender. I'm gonna use a spoon to help myself get them in so that they don't go all over my counter. And as you see, I'm using two whole cans of chickpeas, so I'm going to have plenty of filling for my beautiful borrecas, and I'm going to have plenty of hummus left over to serve on the sides. So in this video, I'm actually teaching you how to make two recipes in one. So that didn't go so bad. Most of them went in. I just missed one. <laughs> so now that they're all in, we're just going to add the rest of our ingredients. We're going to add our 
four cloves of garlic and we can add those whole because they're going to break up when we blend. And then I'm gonna add that beautiful juice of that large lemon that I squeezed. And now I'm going to add right on top of that my olive oil, extra virgin olive oil for an incredible flavor. And then on top of that, I'm gonna add my tahini paste. So this is thick and delicious, and it's going to give our hummus that special, amazing, nutty flavor that we love so much. Making sure to get all of it in, it's nice and thick. And now we're going to add our condiments. So I'm going to be adding some cumin because I really love the flavor that it gives these borrecas. But if you're not a fan, then of course you can omit the cumin. But I really like what it does to these borrecas. So now I'm gonna be adding some paprika, which I normally would not add into my hummus. I would just add some on top when I serve it. But being that this hummus is going to go inside my Israeli style borrecas, I wanna have that touch of paprika for that smokiness included in the flavor of the hummus. So. Finally, we're gonna add our touch of salt because this way we control the amount of sodium. And I'm going to put my lid on and then I'm just going to pulse it all together. I'm gonna to turn on my blender and I prefer pulsing little by little than just running it because this way every so often I take my lid off and then I use my silicone spatula and I give it all a little bit of a stir. I wanna help those chickpeas get lower into the cup so that the blade can break them all down and my hummus can become creamy. The texture of our hummus is super important because you want it creamy and you don't want it lumpy. So we are almost there with the texture, but you're going to notice that your hummus is a little on the thick side. So what I like to do at this point is I pour some water into a measuring cup and then I drizzle just a touch of water into the blender and then I blend it in. You just pour a little bit at a time because this way you can control the creaminess and the smoothness of your hummus. But of course, you don't wanna to pour too much in and then end up with a runny hummus. You wanna make sure that your hummus is thick and creamy and it has the perfect texture and smoothness. So I added just a touch and then I'm gonna blend it in. And as you see, I take my lid off and then I check for texture and smoothness until I'm satisfied with my final results. So I ended up adding just a touch over a quarter cup of water to my hummus and it was perfect. It gave me the exact texture that I was looking for. So at this point, what I like to do is I like to taste my hummus. Now, everybody's taste buds are different, so it's important you take a bit of a taste and make sure you have the right amount of spices, the right amount of salt. I think it's absolutely perfect. It's exactly where I want it to be. I'm not adding a thing to it. But of course, if you prefer a little more cumin or you think it needs a touch more of salt, that's totally up to you. The result is creamy and delicious, and to me, this is the perfect combination of flavors. So as you can see for now, I removed the hummus from the blender and I just added it into a bowl because I'm gonna work directly out of this bowl to use my hummus as my filling for my Israeli style hummus borregas, and they're going to be delicious. So now, my bowl is ready with my spoon and I've opened my first sheet of puff pastry and you'll see I kind of flattened it out with my hand and I'm going to be making six different triangles out of each sheet. So let me show you what I do to cut them. So you'll see that the sheets have these lines that run through them, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the sheet in half in the opposite direction of those lines and then of course I'm gonna use those two lines as a guide to help me create six different areas to make six different triangles to make my borregas. But of course, when I cut them this way, you are going to notice that I don't really end up with squares. What I end up with is rectangles. 
So I'll get a little more into the shaping in a second. What I wanna do right now is just set out my six pieces and then I beat one egg into a bowl and I set out some sesame seeds and a spoon in another bowl. And of course I brought over my pastry brush because I want to be ready. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that rectangle and I'm going to make it into a square because of course, in order to create a triangle, I need to start with a square so that when I fold up, my dough, it becomes a triangle. So I removed just a touch of the dough from this particular piece. And then what I do is I grab some of my hummus and I just put it right in the middle of this delicious dough. And then I just wanna fold my dough over and I just wanna make a triangle, a beautiful pocket filled with beautiful hummus inside. And it is soft and perfect. The dough thawed perfectly, and it just works super, super easy. So what I do is I grab my fork, and then I just press my fork around the edges of this beautiful borreca to seal them. And it just makes such a pretty, <laughs> beautiful little triangular pocket. It's absolutely perfect. And then of course, I place my borreca on my tray that I lined with some parchment paper, and then I move on to shaping the next one. So what I wanna do is I wanna cut off a little piece just like I did before. And don't worry, I always use these pieces. Once I'm done making my borrecas, I always find something to make with them. I either put them all together, flatten them out, and then stuff them, or I just use them on top of any dish that I'm baking to give like a beautiful golden crust. Definitely, they do not go to waste. So, what I'm doing is the same process. As you saw, I cut off a piece of dough, filled the center with some hummus, then I folded it over to create my triangle, and then what I wanna do is bring over my fork and then press down on the edges to kind of seal my borreca. So notice that as I press, sometimes a little bit of the hummus will leak out, but that's totally okay. You just kind of clean that off and keep going. That's totally fine and it's totally normal. That's gonna happen every so often as you are filling your borrecas, that's totally fine. So now you just make sure your borreca is nicely closed and then you add it onto your tray with the other one. And then we're just going to keep repeating the same process over and over, each time removing just a little strip and then adding our hummus in the center, folding over our dough, and then of course sealing our dough with our fork to create our borreca. Now, as I explained earlier, by cutting our dough this way, we are going to be getting six borrecas out of each sheet of puff pastry. So the idea here is to use two sheets of puff pastry per tray. So I am getting 12 borrecas onto each of my two trays for a total of 24. But what I like to do is I make 12 and then I bake those 12 while I work on the next set of 12. And this way, I just use my time wisely and the first batch is baking and the kitchen is smelling absolutely delicious while I continue to make my second batch. So as I am making these six, what I'm doing this time is that instead of going one by one, now that you guys already know how to make these, you see how easy it is to just take the pieces of dough and then cut the strips off of all six of them. And then of course you can work much quicker. You can just fill all six of them and then you can fold all six and then you can press them down with your fork and then add all six of them onto your tray. So this just kind of works a little quicker. Once you get the hang of it, this is how you can do it. So now, I have my first 12 borrecas onto my first tray. And what I'm doing is I grab that egg that I beat and I didn't add any water to it. I'm just using straight up beaten egg, the whole egg. And then I'm using my pastry brush and I'm gonna give all of my borrecas a really nice coating of this beaten egg because it's really gonna give a really nice finish to these borrecas. It gives them a little bit of a gloss and it just really helps that puff pastry get nice and golden as it bakes. It's absolutely beautiful. 
So once you've painted all of your borrecas with egg, then what you do is you grab your bowl with sesame seeds and you grab a teaspoon and then you just sprinkle some sesame seeds on top of your beautiful Israeli style hummus borrecas. Now you can add as much or as little of these as you like. I like to give them a nice little coating. I think it gives it some really nice texture and it just a little extra nuttiness. It's just absolutely perfect. And then what I do is I grab a sharp knife and I puncture my borrecas a couple of times right on the top because this way it allows my borrecas to release steam as they are baking because that creamy hummus center is gonna get hot and steamy as it bakes. And this way it avoids my borrecas opening up as they bake. So now just place your first tray of borrecas on a center rack in your oven and set a 30 minute timer to allow them to bake. And those 30 minutes will give you plenty of time to prepare your second batch of Israeli style hummus borrecas. And look at how much hummus we still have left over, which is exactly what I wanted. So my second 12 are ready, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did with my first 12. I'm going to give them all a nice coating of egg wash, and then I'm going to sprinkle them all with some sesame seeds. And finally, I'm going to puncture them with my knife before getting them ready to go into the oven. How pretty do these guys look? <laughs> they're absolutely adorable. And they're just so tasty and they're the perfect combination of flavors and of textures of flakiness and creaminess and nuttiness. They're just perfect. And that extra hummus I serve on a platter and I drizzle it with some extra virgin olive oil on top and another touch of paprika that I sprinkled on top and it is ready to be served. And now my first tray of Israeli style hummus borrecas is ready and I'm pulling them out of the oven and very quickly I'm going to set my second tray into the oven and of course set another 30 minute timer to let that second batch bake. But let's take a moment to observe how gorgeous these Israeli style hummus borrecas have turned out. Don't they look super beautiful? These borrecas are so different and so tasty and so amazingly delicious. When anyone takes a bite into them, they're going to be wowed. They're going to be really questioning like, wait, wow, what is this? Oh my God, it's a hummus borreca? How delicious is this? And this is just the perfect little side dish or snack. It is just absolutely divine. And of course, you can serve these as an appetizer and everyone is going to be quite happy. So once you can handle them, remove them from the hot tray and place them onto a cooling rack to allow them to cool just a bit before you bite into them. And then that second batch is beautiful and has been baking away and is now ready to be taken out of the oven. And there they are also gorgeous and golden and delicious. And the smell is just so divine. These are really, really tasty and they're just the perfect bite. So now I remove the second batch and place those also onto a cooling rack to give them all a chance to cool down just a touch before I indulge. But these are absolutely perfect. Imagine this for a lunch with a little side salad. They're just absolutely perfect at any time and with any meal. And of course, the bonus is you have these beautiful borrecas and then you have that amazing hummus to go with it. So it's perfect. A little bit of pita and you're good to go. What an absolutely delicious meal or appetizer for any time really. They're perfect for a brunch. They're just absolutely divine. So I, of course, am going to grab one of these and I'm going to have to try it because I just cannot wait. They've been smelling my kitchen and my entire house up and I am dying to take a little bite. Look how beautiful and puffy and golden these look. I just can't wait to try it. Wow divine the flakiness of the puff pastry and the creaminess of that hummus center is spectacular it is fantastic and that cumin it is so perfect 
It is the perfect warm spice together with the paprika and the garlic. Mmm, I can't get enough. Look at how quickly this guy is disappearing. <laughs> it is absolutely divine. So delicious. You are really going to love these. Mmm, so, so good. And let's not forget that bonus dish that we have to serve with it, that creamy homemade hummus. I happen to have some mini pita lying around. So guess what? I'm going to dig in and grab some of this delicious homemade hummus with its amazing flavors. Mmm, it's perfect, creamy, nutty, with the right amount of spices. It's just absolutely perfect. And that lemon just brings it over the top. And that delicious extra virgin olive oil that I poured on top with that paprika is the perfect smokiness and the perfect, perfect bite. Mmm, so good. So how absolutely delicious do these Israeli-style hummus borrecas look? They are divine with that flaky puff pastry and that creamy hummus filling. And you saw how quickly we made that hummus. It's super easy. And of course, you can serve that by itself because it's absolutely delicious. But inside this flaky Israeli style borreca, it's really special. And you can serve it at any time as a little appetizer or just when you're having some friends over. It's super easy to put together and it's special, different, and delicious. Trust me. No, better yet, don't trust me. You're gonna have to try to make this recipe yourself. And of course, if you've enjoyed today's recipe, don't forget to like, comment, and share. I love it when you share my recipes with your friends, so thank you so much. And of course, if you haven't done so already, please remember to subscribe to my channel and to touch that little notification bell so that you get notified whenever I put up a new delicious and different recipe. And of course, make sure to explore under my video tab where I have tons of recipes already there for you. And if you're not already following me on social media, please be sure to follow me as Sally that girl in the kitchen on Facebook, Instagram, and on Pinterest. And you can follow me as Sally that girl FL on Twitter, Snapchat, and on TikTok. See you next time. Sally that girl in the kitchen.